Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom here on Expansion Day, one of the finest days in the land, July 21st. They're going to be making picks today. Seattle's going to have a team. Hit the subscribe and the bell and support. We're trying to hit a 1,000. A thousand subscribers. See if we can do it together. You know what? It's not about me. It's about growing a community. So if we could do it together, that's awesome. Also, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Uh, we're first of all, we're going to be doing looking at a few leaks that have come out in expansion. The expansion process. I was hoping this didn't happen. I was hoping that they didn't have these leaks come out, but it's just the way of the world now. Can't keep things uh, under wraps. I would have rather, I'm doing a live show tonight with Peyton on the radio, the prize. Peyton on the radio from Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Steel Flyers All Sports Network, let me explain. We're not a Flyers network. We're not a Steel network. The guy's name is Steel Flyers, okay? All sports all teams, all the time, equally. We love them all. Started out as a Flyers website, but it's grown into everything. Uh, it's grown into every team and every sport. So, yeah. Um, anyways, the prize is going to be on tonight. And I hope there's some surprises still available. But we do have some leaks, and I'm going to get into what I think about some of them and also show you some things that I kind of had accurate already. But uh, let's take a look at it, shall we? First one, Seattle Kraken, according to Pierre Lebrun and uh, Samuel Nadine, Val, Val, Valji, oh yeah, Valji from TSN, uh, is uh, going to be selected by the Seattle Kraken. I was pretty sure of this. I had him on mine too. I... I had him flipping him, but I'm not so sure about that now. Um, he may. It's going to depend on Mark, I think. If Mark wants to put some roots down, and uh, he probably has about two, three years of legs in him there, and, and he wants to build up a uh, maybe a coaching resume, it'd be a great spot for him to be able to be like an extra coach for the young players they're going to have in Seattle and stuff like that. So we'll see if what he decides to do, but apparently he's going to, they're going to go that direction. The next one is the Seattle Kraken are linked to Gord, Tana, Dunn, and McCann. Look at that. We're getting way too many of them here right now. So let's unpack these a little bit. Yanni Gord. Um, I really thought that, and maybe there is a deal here, but I really thought that uh, Seattle would push the envelope here and try to get more out of Tampa Bay than just taking a pick. But it looks it with with this leaking out like this, it does sound like it's probably just going to be Yanni Gord, uh, a good center. I I picked him too. If you weren't going to make a deal, then I would have went with Yanni Gord too. I would have played along that I was going to pick somebody else. And then hope that they uh, gave some picks to take other players and stuff like that. Uh, Tana from Pittsburgh. I also had Tana selected. Uh, just a good raw raw guy, a great energy guy. He is making like quite a bit of money for his, what he does, but he actually is a really good defensive player. Can not bad put put some not bad offensive numbers up, and he was really the only one. I thought that was worth taking out of there. Not to mention, he can be flipped for a pick for sure. Uh, somebody, especially right around playoff time, would be willing to pick him. I'm trying to think of that other Pittsburgh player now off the top of my head that was available, but he was making too much money, and I didn't think they were going to select, select him. Now, um, the St. Louis, apparently, the pick is going to be done. Uh which is a guy who's had a lot of troubles in St. Louis. Um, it seems to have butted head against management. Who, by the way, also the other guy that they thought that people thought they might select Tarasenko, whom they thought that they would select Tarasenko, um, take half the salary, retain half the salary. And send them somewhere for picks. And I think it seems like they were entertaining that idea. 
But obviously, they didn't think it was what their return was, was going to be worth more than what they thought done was, which doesn't bode well for St. Louis. Uh, now they're going to have to find another team that is either willing to do that or they're going to have to try to trade uh, Tarasenko at full value of his contract, which you're going to get nothing back for that. You will have to give up. Uh, a guy who had shoulder surgery, hadn't played in a year, uh, has had two shoulder surgeries now, hasn't played in a year. I don't think anybody's going to touch that a full contract unless uh, you give them something else on top of it. So they're in a tough situation there in St. Louis. And then losing Dunn as well, which they tried to trade last year. Uh, apparently they had a trade in place, this is a rumor, to Pittsburgh for Latang, like some sort of package that they would get Latang back. That was just before, um, oh, what's his name? Rutherford was let go. Or, yeah, just before Rutherford was let go. And apparently part of that deal was that uh, Pittsburgh Penguins said, no, we don't want to do that, he, uh, and told Rutherford that, you know, they overrode his uh, trade. And that was the final straw for him. And he decided to basically step down, but it was a, a mutual agreement. Then we have McCann from Toronto. Uh, you can read, hopefully, you can read this while I'm doing this. Uh, McCann from Toronto, uh, which I heard so much about the fact that it was going to be Kerfoot. Pitts, uh, Toronto, obviously, uh, by the way, traded McCann for McCann. Uh, just before the deadline, didn't really give up too much. Where is it here? It's, I thought they had it here, but apparently they don't. Um, didn't really give up too much. Oh, where's the trade? Hannah McCann. Yeah, I gave up a uh, pick with Vancouver. Prospect Hallander and a 2023 seventh round pick, which isn't all that much. But they basically did that to get a player that they don't have to give up a player that was already on the roster. So I like the pick of McCann there. It was who I selected as well. To uh, If I was Seattle, I would have taken McCann as well. Finally, uh, not finally, actually, there's two more pieces here. Uh, Kraken will not select Carey Price, which if you watch my video yeah, I put out yesterday, I showed that it was pretty clear to me that they weren't going to select Carey Price, and there was a lot of reasons for that. You might want to watch it. Uh, I, The media was trying to play this up like it was some thing, and I'm surprised it's leaked because they could have used it to draw people to the draft tonight which I'm going to do on this channel, by the way, a live feed. So I ho hopefully you're there to, to watch it. Um, but I gave a lot of reasons why. There's no, there was no way in my head, my mind, that Seattle was taking them. There was no way in my mind that Carey Price was going to waive unless they believed that he was going to be selected. I, I, they all knew. Uh, but you can look in, I gave all the reasons why that he wasn't going to get picked. Uh, didn't even, I, it wasn't even a thing for me. Uh, Mike Smith and Edmonton Oilers are progressing on a new contract. I'm scared to find out what that'll be. Uh, I've heard some numbers like 3 million for two years. Uh, that would be awful. Uh, but we'll see what happens. And then finally, Seattle Kraken expected to sign Adam Larson and Jamie Alexiak. Um, if you looked at my mock draft, and I don't know why, who, I'm pretty sure everybody would have watched it by now, right? Probably even Larson and Alexiak watched it, of course. Uh, I did a mock expansion draft, and I mentioned that if I would, I would have uh, considered or at least talked to Alexiak to, and maybe even kind of overspent on him to get him to to come over because he is the right age. He's only like 28 years old. Um, and uh, if you're giving him 5 million, he's 28 years old. It doesn't say how much he signed for, but we'll find out. Um, he's a good shutdown guy. 
I would pay him four to five million for five years, something like that. Probably five. I would even go high as five, maybe even five and a half for a shutdown guy because they're not going to need to worry about cap space all that much for the next little while. And he really has progressed so much in his young career. Like he has, uh, at, you know, there was a time when Alexiak was like really kind of unsure whether he was going to be able to play in the league. But the last four or five years, he's worked on his skating. He covers so much area. He's worked on his positioning. And he's more physical than he used to be. Um, he's really worked hard to become a very, very good shutdown player. I would take him over Edmondson all day. Um, I, he, I, I still think he has upside yet. So good pickup. Uh, as far as Larson is concerned, I think he's kind of reached his peak. Apparently, it's... Uh, Four million for four years, which I'm actually kind of surprised the Edmonton Oilers didn't sign him up for that. Um, maybe he's just maybe they did match that contract, but he just really likes the idea of going to Seattle for whatever reason. But it leaves the Edmonton Oilers with pretty much not much on their D. They're going to have to do something for their D. I'm scared because I'm kind of an Oilers fan. Uh, that they're going to give Barry a, the same contract and or something like that. After a lot of things they've been doing, it wouldn't surprise me. And that wouldn't help their D at all. Uh, even if they do do something like that, they're still going to have to do more with that defense. My gosh, you're going to have Barry, Duncan, Keith. Uh, I like Bear, but really, not, that D is so thin. Um, I would have to imagine they're going, hopefully, God, please, they have Hamilton in their back pocket or somebody of significance to add to that defense. Um, the other thing about the Alexiak trade, I, was, uh, I should also mention, or the other thing about Alexiak, it means that they didn't take Ben Bishop, which I didn't think they would do. Um, it, it's uh, Oh, but I, I should mention also that apparently they're signing both of these guys before for the draft, the expansion draft, which mean it's, means it's there, it's the pick they're taking from the team. If you sign a free agent before, if they have a window to talk to free agents that other GMs can't, and if they sign a player off those teams, that's their pick. And the question has been, why would they uh, do that? Why wouldn't they just wait till afterwards? So I'm going to... I'll t uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, you think about it, if you're Adam Larson or Jamie Alexiak, so what I mean by that is if they were to wait till after the expansion period and wait till the actual free agency and sign them, they could pick another player off of the Oilers and they could pick another player off of Dallas to add another asset to their team. And they're saying, well, why wouldn't they do that? Well, there's several reasons. I think they give the player the option. Think about it. If you're Adam Larson, do you want to be the guy that said, no, I'm going to let them take another player? And then that player has to uproot their family, go to Seattle, and all of that. And they may not want to do that. And that's just not kind of room stuff you really want to do. You see what I'm saying? It's really awkward for the players and Jamie Alexiak as well. They may now have talked to the players that they wanted to select uh, a select. Seattle said, hey, Adam, why don't you call this guy up? This is a guy we're going to select if you wait till after the free agency period. And Adam Larson calls up, say, Benson and says, they're going to select you, dude. And he's like, I don't want to go there. I like Edmonton. I love being here. I want to try to get my guy. Uh, I think I have an opportunity here. I want to take it. And then Adam Larson's in an awkward place. He calls him up and says, you know what? Adam Benson doesn't want to go there, so why don't you just sign me up? I, and it makes sense. It totally makes sense. Same as Drigger in Florida. So, yeah, um, as a team, and then as from the Seattle standpoint, they don't want to make it awkward for their team to be taking guys to have. It's one thing to take a guy that may not want to go. It's another thing to convince a friend to force a guy to come over, it just isn't good for the energy of the team. Okay, boys and girls, that's my full 42. Come uh, 
tell me what you think about everything I just said there in the comment section, um, especially about the waiting for the free agency period and all of those sort of things. And uh, make sure to subscribe. I'll have send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace directly to your door. How Pearlocopter by Melissa and Hernandez. Or Hernandez. In fact, we just got a jet old frolic. One thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, coming once we, once we have the jet old frolic. I'm going to come to all of your lands. So we're going to go to hockey games together. We're going to do Perlo dances like this. Yeah. Good job, Jack. You're getting really good at that. That You got the smile down. Perfect. Jacket is one of the people that goes on my tell it my program, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show, uh, which I'll be on today from three to five Eastern. I hope to see you there because it is brilliant. We'll be talking about all this stuff, and you can tell me what you think about everything I just said and more. And you don't have to be nice about it. I don't mind. This is hockey. We're not we're not having to be nice. You don't have to be nice in hockey. Okay? Talk to you later. Okay, bye. That's my full 42.